Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you, motherfuckers. Um, Jesus Christ. It is 3.48 in the morning. A um, little jet lagged here. Knocking out the podcast. I just did uh, two shows on uh, what would be that? Tuesday and Wednesday here in Liverpool. And um, at the Liverpool Philharmonic, they had a little drum kit back there. I didn't have any earplugs. I didn't realize that they were going to give me one. So messed around on it a little bit. But the fucking crowds were amazing. All of my jokes seem to be working on this side of the pond. There were a couple of things that I had to make minor adjustments to. Um, one of the lines people don't get, but I'm leaving it in the fucking special anyways. I don't give a shit, but this thing's ready to go. I am very excited, very relaxed. I'm in a great place. And um, I want to thank everybody who came out on a school night. Tuesday and Wednesday, I could not have had a better time. And thank you to uh, Chris Cans who opened up for me. Um, had a great time working with him. He fucking killed both shows, um, which I always like. I hate doing a show where, you know, I like it wire to wire. Everybody does a good job. So there's none of that bathroom break bullshit um, while people are on stage, you know. So, underrated, Liverpool, beautiful goddamn city. Also helped that the weather was perfect. Um, I guess, you know, it's usually gloomy and rainy around these parts, but uh, we got two sunny days, and tonight Liverpool had a game, and people still came out to my show, which was very flattering, and uh, I kind of got all back into the whole Premier League shit as uh, Liverpool won, so I guess you get three points for winning. And last I checked, they were like one point ahead of Man City. All right? Now, this is what's interesting. Liverpool is backed by American dollars. All right? Man City is backed by Saudi, and, Saudi Arabian money. Now, we buy oil from Saudi Arabia, so in a lot of, in a bunch of it, so in a lot of ways, they're also in a roundabout way backed by American dollars. But from what I heard, rumor has it, is we got more oil in our country at this point than they do. So I don't know how to do this fucking math. <laughs> All I know is the owner of the Red Sox owns uh, Liverpool. And you didn't realize how fucking insane it would be if the owner of the Red Sox owned him right through the curse of the babe, ended that curse. And from what I heard, Liverpool has never won the premier championship. There's 10 fucking games left. So all they got to do is keep winning. There's no playoffs, which playoffs, which blows my mind because they're leaving so much money on the table. Like, who am I as an, what am I saying? Who am I as an American? This is what Americans do. It's what fucking English people do. You barge in and you fucking put your own ideas in somebody else's foreign land. So why not? You guys got to have a playoff. This is like college football all over again. Everybody would bitch at the end of the fucking year. It's a little bit different. That's actually, it's a lot different. It actually kind of makes sense. But I don't know. Call me a stupid American, but if they had a fucking playoff. Like what if, what if you know, I mean, if you play all fucking year, and 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 you, you lose by one point, so you don't get the championship. You're one point less. Let's say it ended today, and Liverpool beats Man City by one point. What if they just fucking had one more game? The top two teams. Or what if they had a special thing that if if the top two teams, if you're within five fucking points, if you're in second place by five points of, or less. You've earned a playoff game and they play a one game winner takes fucking all. All right. You're going to tell me like how many fucking people are going to tune in for that? You know, instead of having all these fucking games going on at the same time. Hey, Bill, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but the league's pretty fucking successful. We, we really don't need your fucking ideas. I don't know. Sorry. 
I just grew up with playoffs. Playoffs. Um, so anyways, uh, that's fucking was pretty exciting. And the next time I really got into it, you know, everybody was walking around today with their scarves on. I saw this guy with the suit on. He was going to work, but he still had a white shirt on with a red tie. Clearly, like, supporting his team. Like, people were fucking into it. It killed me. It killed me to not go to that game. Obviously, I did a, had a great time doing the show, but, like, just to know that that was right there. Mo Salah is playing, and he's fucking like the Wayne Gretzky of soccer right now. And I'd have a chance to see another great athlete live. Um, next time I come back, I'm going to be drinking. I figure I'll do a one-off show here the day before the day after. Probably the day after would be better if there was a game, right? No, wait, do the show first, and then, then I do the game. Then I get all banged up, and I go to the fucking game, and I put a bunch of money on Liverpool. That way I'll give a fuck. Um, I still don't understand why the defense is allowed to stop fucking running, and then you're off sides. And if that's the case, why don't you just put four fat ladies back on defense that can't fucking run, and then they never get near your net, right? Just have them sitting down in the grass playing with the fucking daisies. I don't get it. Um, whatever. Somebody will explain it to me. Um, so uh, I got to tell you about a, a, a little medical episode that I had. So I flew over here from New York City. Uh, I don't remember if I, I was so fucked up. I don't remember if I even told you this. Did I, did I already tell the story about almost faint? Well, I figured out why I almost fainted in the elevator, right? I already told you this stuff, so I told it on Monday. Recap real quickly is I, I, the day after I flew from New York to L.A., I mean to, uh, to Manchester, took the train over to Liverpool, um, they had a, a fucking steam and they had a sauna. And I went to the sauna and I was in there and I wasn't sweating. I'm just like, and it didn't feel hot. I'm like, what the, f- this fucking thing sucks. And then I went to the steam and I was like, all right, this is better. And then when I left, I had to walk up a flight of stairs. When I got to the elevator, like, dude, I almost went down. Like the closest I've come to fainting ever, other than from alcohol, just doing a fucking face plant. So I was blaming their sauna, thinking it was that shit that heats you up from the inside. And I didn't realize how fucking hot I was. But uh, when I told a few people what happened, um, it was, I was dehydrated from, I don't think I drank enough water when I was in New York. So I was already a little dehydrated. Then I got on a seven hour fuck, six and a half, seven hour flight and then didn't drink water and then took a sauna and a fucking steam. So, and then all my symptoms, like I fucking, when I went into the locker room, I was by myself and all of a sudden I was like, Oh my God, I got to fucking sit down. And then I was like dry heaving and I was like, Oh my God, what the fuck? I'm going to puke. And then I didn't puke. And there was nobody in the locker room. And then after that, then all of a sudden it wanted to come out the other end, not to get fucking gross, but uh, it did. And I think that toilet is retired. And and somebody told me, said, all of these are signs of you were dehydrated. You're dehydrated. So I was dehydrated before I I, I, took a fucking sauna and a steam and my dumb ass almost fucking passed out. Did I tell you this story? I can't remember. No, wait, I didn't. I didn't. That's right, because I had the show that night. And when I did the show, there was a couple of times when I, I, I ramped up the energy and I was like touching my toes, doing something. I came back up fast. And I was like, oh, fuck, am I going to pass out right here on stage? Um, dude, I got on the fucking elevator. And this other guy got on with me and I was just leaning on the fucking like armrest there, the, the rail. And I was just staring at the ground And you know that deal when you think you're going to faint and you're just trying to keep yourself cool and every time you think you hit the top, like, okay, I can deal with this. I can maintain my consciousness. It goes a little higher and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Hang in there. And I can't remember if the dude was talking to me or not. I think he said something to me. But when I got off, I got off at the wrong floor. So I had to walk down a flight of stairs and I got to the first first step and just sat down. And then the guy looked at me. He goes, are you okay? All right. Now, if I was a woman, I would be like, no, I need help. I have a family and a child that's depending on me to not die, right? But I'm a man, so of course I said, 
Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Dude, I was I was not fine. And he, you know, he's a guy, so he's like, all right, well, this is emotionally weird to deal with this with another guy. And he just fucking left. So I sat on the fucking stairs for like, I don't know, like another like minute. And I slowly walked down the stairs and I just, uh, I, I made it into the, the hotel room. And at that point, I, uh, I asked Club Soda Kenny, I, I just texted him, said, bring me a Gatorade and some fucking waters and shit. So I just pounded that and I was all right. But Jesus Christ, old freckles almost went down. Oh, Freckle. Okay, here's one for you. If you're a fucking dumbass like me and you get on a plane and fly for six hours more or more and you're already dehydrated, yeah, don't go take a fucking sauna. And then two, I took two steams because I was like, that sauna's not doing shit. And then when I went into the steam room, I thought I was sweating. It was just the fucking steam. And then I went back in again. Fucking idiot. Um, but other than that, I had a great time here. Uh, you know, checked out the Beatles statue. I did a couple of like touristy things, but other than that, I just tried to walk around, look at a lot of beautiful buildings and everything. Really, really great city. And the people were cool as shit. And uh, I kept striking out with the food though. Jesus Christ. I ate at this fucking Italian place. Who the fuck kind of a fucking asshole gets Italian in Liverpool, England? I went, I ordered these fucking, I got some oysters because, you know, I'm trying to keep my figure for my special. So I ordered some oysters, okay? And I'm thinking, you know, there's water right here. These oysters got to be fresh. Did not taste fresh at all. And then I got one of those, those, uh, you know, those rice balls. Italians make, it's like, it's fucking rice. It's almost like risotto. It's got like cheese in it. And then they deep fried it. It's fucking, that was my little, that was my cheat meal, right? So I ordered those things. It shows up with like truffles on it. It was the blandest. I never send back food. And I, I just don't have the fucking courage to do it. Because you guys send me in stories about sending back food and, like, what happens. Because I'm always of the belief they're going to get mad at you and then they're going to spit on your food. But, like, these fucking things were so bad. There was, like, there was no fixing it. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, hey, this is medium rare. Could you make it medium? It's just, like, this tastes like the person who cooked it doesn't know how to cook. Is this bring your fucking six-year-old to work day and they fucking made my rice balls here? And I just was like, you know what? I'm not fucking eating. This is, this is how rebellious. This is the most rebellious I've ever been in a restaurant. Because I worked in one and I, I never want, I always tip well, even if they fucking suck. So I, I ate one of them. And I was just like, I am not going to, out of politeness and how my parents raised me to not waste food, eat these other five fucking things and then have to get on an elliptical and work off something that I didn't even enjoy. So I just set it to the fucking side and ate my fishy oysters. And the waitress came back around and she goes, okay. She's like, how was everything? And I said what I always say, great. It was all great. It was awesome. And she's looking, clearly seeing that I barely touched it. She goes, everything was fine. And I was like, yeah, it's great. Can I just get the check? And that was it. So the upside is with, with being dehydrated and almost puking and shitting and fucking eating this shit food over here, I, I, I've actually dropped some pounds. Of course, laying off the booze doesn't hurt either. Um, so, anyways, here's another thing I learned. By the way, I'm just going to keep saying anyways because I can't stop saying it. I like to think it's part of my charm. Um, I've always wanted to go to that TT race since I found out about it about six, seven years ago. And I keep trying to book myself on the Isle of Man and they just don't have shows there. I don't know what the deal is. Well, they don't know who I am and they don't give a fuck. I don't know what it is. And I just realized today, looking at the map, that Liverpool is like 45 fucking minutes flight away. So I'm thinking of maybe at some point doing a one-off show here and flying over and seeing that race before... You know, people who don't race motorcycles and don't watch motorcycle racing are so outraged by it that they shut it down. Um, you know, those are the same fucking people who try to get fighting out of hockey and they just they just try to ruin any sort of gladiator thing that is left. 
in society. You know what I mean? Um, oh, the latest dead person that people have go- been going after. They went after John Wayne. Now they just they went after, I think, Bill Hicks. It's the stupidest shit ever. All these white people trying to show how fucking progressive they are by keeping the limelight off of them and all the mistakes they've made socially in their lives. By now, I think they've attacked all the white people they can get that are alive. Now they're going after dead people, dead white people. Apparently, Davy Crockett was a piece of shit. (laughs) I just don't. How is that helping anything? You know, not to mention, it's an astoundingly white thing to do to think that you have to go back in history to find people like that. And then it's up to you to redefine how we are perceiving these fuck. Why don't you deal with what the fuck's going on now? That's another really cringeworthy thing. You know, when people, I can't believe in 2019. Well, that's because you're white. Um, Sorry. It's just, I don't know. I'm just so sick of these fucking lefty whiteys patting themselves on the fucking back you know with all of this shit you know acting like they're fucking doing something it's like listen if you want to get involved there's plenty of groups that you can join that go and just you can physically take time out of your fucking life to go do something stop fucking i don't know i'm you know remember that guy used to do the fucking humble brags the guy passed away he was still around. Maybe he would do another one that had to do with humble bragging, but like it's also in like a social way, woke bragging or some shit. I don't know what it is. Um, so anyways, um, I actually mis- I, I misunderstood when the when the um, the thing for Brody was going to be uh, Brody Stevens is going to be. Um, I don't know why I'm announcing this thing here because it's just for family and comedians. They're going to shut down the comedy store. They're shutting the whole fucking thing down, not making any money that night. This is what this guy meant to the comedy store and everybody that knew and loved him. They're shutting down the entire fucking comedy club March 11th, and we're going to have a big night remembering him, telling stories and all that. It's going to be fucking unbelievable, and I feel so thankful that I'm actually going to be in town when this goes down and I can't wait to, uh, to go down there and be a part of that. And, um, what else did I want to say about that? I can't fucking remember. I'm fucking half, half asleep here. Uh, oh yeah. I was also able to call in Brody, you know, obviously did a podcast for the all things comedy network. And I was talking to one of the people over there And they said today that over 100, to say that again, 100 people showed up um, to be on his final podcast. All went over, drove themselves over there, called in, I Skyped in. And um, it just really goes to show you, uh, like, I, you know, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. You know, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people pass away, but like, um, This guy really touched a lot of people. So, you know, if you can take a positive out of something so fucking sad, that is, uh, that would definitely be it. So I imagine at this point, if I actually had the advertising, I would read some. So I'm just going to say, hey, I'm going to the, uh, the advertising now. And this is where we will edit it in. All right. And now we're back. We're back to the podcast here. Um. What else is there to talk about? I'm going to Glasgow. Now, what I love about Glasgow, aside from the fact that I love I love Scotland, um, is I'm a huge ACDC fan. And old ACDC fans like myself all know that the live album, If You Want Blood, You Got It, was recorded in Glasgow. And I, for years would listen to that song, The Jack. And uh, when Bon Scott sang, she told me she was a virgin. He would say something. I could, any virgins, whatever. I could never understand what he was saying. He was actually saying any virgins in Glasgow, Glasgow. I believe that's what he's saying. And I never, when I finally went, I thought it was Glasgow, so I wasn't saying it right. Then I went there, and I heard how they said it, Glasgow. All of a sudden, it just clicked in my head going, wait a minute. 
is this where they fucking recorded that? So, of course, I had to figure out where the theater was that they recorded it. And I'm like, I got to fucking play there. I got to tell my shit jokes where the greatest rock band, as far as I'm concerned, rock and roll band ever performed one of the greatest rock, live rock albums ever. And unfortunately, I looked it up and it was, uh, it no longer exists. Um, speaking of which, when you come in to Liverpool, they have uh, the club where the Beatles played like 200 shows, like some of their first 200 shows. And now that I am an experienced tourist, I said to the driver, I said, now, is this the original place? Is this the exact place? Because I remember when I was in London, everybody does the stupid Abbey Road thing where you're walking across the street. I want to be John. I want to be Paul. That's not the same crosswalk. The crosswalk has been moved. So you're not standing where they stood. Okay. So I asked. I'm like, okay, now that, that fucking crosswalk bullshit, I did that. And it turned out that they fucking, you know, that wasn't where they were. Now, is this club really the place where John Paul, Ringo, and George all played their first 200 shows? The, the Cavern Club or something like that? And the guy goes, he's like, yeah, no, no, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> place where they originally played, it's like a fucking hotel now. But this is close. It's on the street. So the best thing you can do is you can walk down the street where they walked to go to a club that no longer exists. But when you go into the, the club that they say is the club, it's not the fucking club. Oh, did I take a picture? I got to, I got to, um, I don't want to fucking hurt anybody's business here. But I was with uh, uh, Andrew Themelis. He's, he's like shooting stuff for my Patreon page on this tour, me getting ready for my special. And uh, we went to go, you know, he's a huge Beatles fan. So we went down there. And we were checking out uh, all of these. Uh, oh, come on. Did I take a picture of it? Fuck, I didn't take a picture. God damn it. We went to this, this Beatles museum. Okay, now if you're trying to attract people, you'd, if you have artifacts from the Beatles, what you want to do is have like a couple of your, your, your not your, your best ones. You want to keep your best ones in there or else it's a letdown. But you got to put something from your top five out front. So we go to walk into this fucking museum. He goes, I want to go in. And I was like, all right, all right. And he goes, you don't want to go in? I go, listen, dude, you're fucking huge Beatle fans. I don't want to ruin this for you. Let's fucking go in. So we go to walk up the steps to go in. And I swear to God, they have this mannequin that they dressed like John Lennon. And it was just a mannequin and it had the all white suit that he had. And it wasn't the white suit. It was just a white suit. And they glued a, or taped a beard to a mannequin's face and put this awful fucking wig on it. It looked like me when I dress up to do the comedy jam. And I just started laughing. And I was just like, Andrew, I go, look at this fucking thing. If this is what they have to get you in there, what the fuck do they have in there? And he just started laughing and we were just like, all right, fuck it. Let's get out of here. So I think, I think we made the right move on that one. Uh, but they did have a lot of cool stuff. And we went to another place that had a bunch of cool t-shirts and shit. I tried to sign, find something for my daughter. I actually couldn't find anything, but uh, I got to get her something. But um, I am excited in a couple of days because I'm, I'm flying all, you know, my family over here and I can't wait. Um, uh, to see my kiddo. I signed up for Skype and that's been a good thing. So I talked to her like three times a day and, uh, yeah, she's hilarious, but it's just killing me. The stuff I'm missing. Like this morning, my wife was putting socks on her and they had a little teddy bear on it. And she pointed at it and she goes, teddy bear. And my wife was surprised cause she didn't know she could say that. And she goes, my wife goes, that's right. Teddy bear. And then, my daughter just put her right hand up and she goes, high five. <laughs> like fucking Borat. And my wife said she fucking like, oh, like just keeled over laughing. And what's awesome is my daughter, like she understands that shit's funny now. So now it's the cutest thing ever. She laughs. And after she laughs, she goes funny. It's just, it's the greatest thing ever. And it's killing me that I'm out here. So thank you to whoever invented Skype and FaceTime and all that. So that's, that's been helping me out. But um, 
I'm coming down to the end of it here. I got a uh, I got a killer new hour that I'm very proud of, and I can't wait to fucking unleash this and let it go, and then just see you know you know where the next hour leads me. Uh, and with that, I got to give a shout out here to an amazing musician I saw tonight, uh, Victoria Sharp. I was in this cigar bar. I wasn't going to smoke a cigar before my uh, special, but I had I kind of gave in. I just had to go have one, you know. They had this great place, uh, Puffin Rooms, here in Liverpool. And this woman, Victoria Sharp, S-H-A-R-P-E, um, her Instagram is at Victoria Sharp, S-H-A-R-P-E, music. And um, she was on the piano, and, like, she was so fucking good. It sounded like she was in the other room because they didn't want to have her in there playing piano while everybody was smoking so she was in the smoke free section and she was playing it you know she came around and she had this whole list of songs anything any of these songs like fucking like 200 fucking songs it seems and she just went in and I didn't realize she started playing and after they just sounded like the same artists over and over again I finally looked at the guys I was with I was like is that that woman we were just talking to it was so good it sounded like a, like a recording um, she actually at one point sang happy birthday to this dude Jamie who came out to the show and she sang It's So Good. I actually, this is the first time I've ever been like, yeah, Happy Birthday is a really good song. Like she made Happy Birthday sound like a fucking hit song. So if you ever get a chance to see her, check out her music. She's on uh, Instagram, at Victoria Sharp with an E, at Victoria Sharp Music. Um, check her out. And uh, I mean, she seems like she'd be perfect too if you have a private party. And you just want a killer musician that just plays piano and can just crush it doing that. It's not intrusive, but it adds to the atmosphere. Can't say enough good things about her. And she was cool as shit when I met her. All right. So anyways, thank you to everybody who came out here in Liverpool. Uh, could not have had a great, better time. And it was a fucking honor to be here. And uh, looking forward to going back to Scotland. Been to Glasgow a couple of times. Haven't been in a while. So uh, those fucking lunatics. Scottish people are fucking lunatics. I love them. So um, then after that, we go to Manchester, then I think Birmingham, and then it's off to London, and old Freckles does his special. I'm getting really fucking excited for this. So uh, that's it. Enjoy the music. And then we have a half hour of the greatest hits Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and the Thursday gone by last year, or five years ago, who knows? All right, we'll see you. on it's bill burr and it's the monday morning podcast for monday february 28th 2011 and uh that's it for this month pay your fucking rent it's due tomorrow all right all you potheads out there sitting on the couch man whoa is it like february i like making fun of potheads they, they they're really fucking defensive individuals um, every once in a while, I make fun of potheads on here, and I get a plethora of emails. Speaking of emails, uh, if you'd like to send an email to the podcast, uh, send it to bill at the mmpodcast.com. That's the new email. Bill, B-I, B as in Bill, I-L-L, at the mmpodcast.com. All right? And, uh, yeah, I make fun of the fucking potheads. I make fun of them. I was actually having a – I mean, I don't give a shit if you do it or not. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if that's your ritual. That's what you have to do. Dude, what's the difference between having a beer and smoking a joint at the end of the day, huh? Why don't you answer that one there, freckle face? I'll tell you what the difference is. What I'm doing is legal. What you're doing is don't you throw your pot-smoking fucking hands in the air. Let me finish my point. 
All right? You hemp shirt wearing motherfucker. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the difference. That's the only difference because I, I don't even think like as far as health goes. I was going to say health-wise, but that, that word doesn't exist. I remember from my vocab improvement class way back in high school, um, this guy used to talk about the wise guys. Health-wise, sports-wise, weather-wise, the wise guys. That, that, those words do not exist. Although lately, ladies, um, lately, uh, the dictionaries just said, fuck it. You know, we can't keep up with the overwhelming level of stupid people using words that we say don't exist. And then they just give in, you know, like they'll make LOL oh, like a legitimate word. An abbreviation meaning laugh out loud, initially seen on the Internet in 2003. They'll do shit like that. You know, that's a bad example. But then again, I'm not exactly a great host. All right? You want something better? Go to another fucking podcast. I don't need you. Your attitudes. The hell was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about weed. Um, The difference. The difference. I was talking to a buddy of mine last night. We were out in a sports bar. Um, We actually watched the the Celtics Clippers. Great game. And uh, it's awesome to see the Clippers are good. And I'm also really... Really, really nervous about getting rid of uh, Kendrick Perkins. I don't get that. I just felt a big sigh of relief from everybody on the uh, on the Lakers bench. Oh, thank God we don't have to deal with that guy fucking making us be men, you know? Bitch slapping us in the fucking paint like we deserve. That's why Pau Gasol's face is so fucking thin. He took a slap from Perkins on both sides of his head. He gave him a double. Remember Killer Khan? He gave him one of those. Uh, during the first time we met him in the finals. And then he had that deer-in-the-eye look for the rest of the fucking series. That's what happened. Um, and we, yeah, we traded him away. But don't get too excited, Laker fans, because I got a feeling those fucking the Thunder are going to take you out. You know, I think you guys are right. Uh, I think you, you've if you had your moment. If you had your moment in the fucking sun. But don't worry. Don't worry. I heard through the fucking grapevine that, uh, that what's his face there? The goddamn... He looks like one of those uh, Transformers. Who's the guy? I play? I'm so bad when I, when I talk about who. What the fuck is it? Dwight Howard. I heard through the grapevine wants to be a fucking Laker. Can you believe that shit? Can you believe that shit? You know, can Kobe have any more championships just laid at his fucking feet? Overrated. Kobe Bryant, three out of his five fucking rigs. Fucking, ugh. And all those stupid Laker fans, yeah, MVP, MVP. Anytime he does anything, just drives me up the fucking wall. The guy got Shaq in his prime with Phil Jackson. You know, and all these moron Laker fans would be like, well, Jordan had him. Jordan had him when he was a fucking nobody with no experience. Okay, other than as a player. Okay, he became Phil Jackson with, with, with the Bulls. You know what I mean? You fucking morons. He knew how to win. He knew how to take big stars and mold them together. That's what the fuck he got. And that's what he got with Shaq. And then he still pulled the fucking team apart. Still pulled them apart. I don't know. If he gets fucking Dwight Howard, fuck him. And and the last two championships I respected. All right? But those first three, give me a fucking break. Okay? You take Kobe out of that lineup and you put me in there in that little fucking frilly gold and purple uniform with my ghost white legs. We're still going to win 50 games. I'm just going to be feeding Shaq. And he's going to turn around with his tongue sticking out the side of his mouth like some special needs kid trying to put blocks in a round circle. Right? Uh, Really? Did you have to attack those people, Bill? Sorry. I'm going off the dome. Um, Anyways, let's get back to fucking pot here. All right? This is is the conversation I had. Oh, I know. So um, I I went to this this Boston uh, sports bar last night. And for the first time since I can fucking remember, I had a good experience as a fan. Because, uh, I mean, almost you guys who listen to this, you know, even over there in jolly old England. You cozy smug cunts, right? If you're a fan of Liverpool, you pretty much live in Liverpool, right? Isn't that how it, at least when you're young. But then you move away. And not only do you feel weird rooting on your team, you, you, people are telling you that they suck. It, it, it's unreal. 
since 1995, I moved to New York City, and then it went from everybody loving the Red Sox to absolutely hating their existence. And then I moved out to L.A., and everybody hates the Celtics. And um, not to mention the awful vibe of sports fans out here in uh, on the West Coast. They are fucking horrific. I don't know why ESPN spends the lion's share of their time when they talk about awful fans just talking about Philly, you know, just recycling those same two fucking stories about Santa Claus and uh, I don't know what else they did. They fucking, what did they do? Then they rape like Kathy Lee Gifford. Is that what happened? I can't fucking remember. Anyways, um, yeah, just out here. The vi- It's just not fun out here. Um, I don't know. It's, I, I, I can't explain it. It's like back east, obnoxious, shit-talking morons, right? And I include myself as one of those. But eventually, it dies down, and you'll start talking about the game. You'll start talking about games you went to. you start talking... Sports. It goes beyond, hey, fuck you, you fucking chowder-eating fag. It goes beyond that. Out here, it never does. And when it does, it goes on to, uh, I'll stab you in the parking lot. <laughs> it, it's not fun out here. I, just, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. There's that I will stab you in the fucking... People get stabbed at games out here. It's hilarious. Like that movie, The Warriors. It's fucking ridiculous. You UCLA and USC played at the Rose Bowl, okay? And people got stabbed. <laughs> and they're talking about Philly because they threw batteries at Santa Claus. What would you rather have? Would you rather be dressed like a holiday icon taking a fucking Duracell to the head? Or would you rather take a steak knife to the gut? Through your game worn jersey out in the parking lot to bleed out on, on the fucking seventeenth hole outside of the Rose Bowl. I don't fucking know. So anyways, can I can I so I I, I what am I I I I don't know what I'm saying. You know you're a stuttering prick. Um so I went to this <laughs> I went to this sports bar. There was just, just a Boston sports bar and it was fucking great. Like the Celtics did something good. And I was almost self-conscious to cheer. I'm so beaten down by living out here. And everybody was going nuts. And it was just such a fucking relief. And it was awesome. And I've decided, fuck Staples Center. I'm not going to the games down there. Um, even Dodgers games are surprisingly not fun. I had a buddy of mine showed up to a Dodgers game. They were playing some other National League team. And he's from Cleveland. He had a Cleveland Indians hat on. He's out in the bleachers, and this guy starts, like, legitimately saying, I'm going to kick the shit out of you if you don't take that Cleveland Indians hat off. Fucking Indians. They haven't won since 1948. Who gives a fuck? So anyways. Ah, fuck. I'm never going to get back to the weed here. I'm going to have to stick with this fucking story. So last week, as you, you know, I cut the podcast short because someone hooked me up, and I went to the, uh, to the All-Star game to go down there and watch some of the greatest athletes on the planet. And, of course, check out the who was... Um, and I was not disappointed. Um, fucking amazing basketball. Um, and the level of horror of just every fucking tier. Okay. The desperate whore, the whore lived down the fucking street all the way up to the whore who flew in for the fucking game. Who's been doing P90X for the last fucking eight months, you know, did some sort of cleanse and was just in unbelievable shape, just fucking trying to figure out how to get in to an after party, to get into the hotel, and it was fucking awesome. So anyways, I get I get this insane hookup, right? I'm not trying to big league you guys here, all right? But I got a I got a great I got a great fucking hookup and I was in one of those uh one of the luxury boxes, one of the ninety million luxury boxes that they have at Staples Center. They have like three three levels of them. Um and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, finally, I'm in Staples Center. It's not a Lakers game. It's not a Clippers game. They're not playing the Celtics. I don't have to listen to Boston sucks the entire time I'm here, right? And all of a sudden, hang on a second. Is that my phone? Can you hear that? Where the fuck is my phone? Hear that gay little ring? That's my phone. Where is it? Bum, 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 bum. Anybody else have the fucking droid? You hear that? 
Dun, 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 dun. The reason why I picked that is because I, there's like 10 options for a ringtone on the droid. And the first nine sound like an air raid. You know, bam, bam, bam. Or like, like this, this ringing that just – it just puts me on edge. So the only thing like that one's called waterfall. <laughs> I think it is. So I have it set on that. Every time I do, Nia goes, what are you, a fig? But I say, I, I like that one. So anyways, so I got box seats for the fucking All-Star game. It's ridiculous, right? Um, I'm sitting there, and I got a whole, you know, I bought, like, an All-Star T-shirt. And, you know, total fucking nerd fan. And I go to the game. I'm thinking, this is great. So finally I have to deal with shit-talking people, right? I'm sitting there watching the game, and all of a sudden this little kid voice. Seven, eight-year-old, when, when Doc Rivers put out the big three from the Celtics, I just start hearing this kid going, anytime a Celtic shoot the ball, he'd go, Brick! Boston sucks! Sit down, Boston! You, you suck! Yelling this shit, right? The entire fucking time I go, you got to be shitting me. you got to be shitting me. Uh, really? You're going to heckle at a fucking all-star game, you idiot, right? And then... They go to sit the big three from uh, the Celtics, right? And then I hear this guy's voice go, yo, sit down, Boston. I'm like, what kind of a fucking moron yells that at an all-star game? And I look over. I'm not going to say who it was, but uh, it was a rapper, very famous rapper, who has transcended being just a rapper, you know, has traveled the fucking world and I'm literally sitting there going, because I was looking at the kid going, this kid sounds like a 35-year-old asshole, you know, who calls in like a sports talk radio kind of thing. Why is he behaving that way? And then I look, oh, because his dad is an asshole. It was just, I don't know, just kind of it ended up, you know, the experience ended up suck. But I will give this to them. At least they were they were making some noise. I don't know if you guys watched the All-Star game. It was the worst crowd I've ever seen in my life. The problem was because the entire lower level was either former players, whores, or some form of celebrity or somebody managing a celebrity. And uh, everybody just sat there. I mean, I could have yelled from where I was sitting and uh, someone on the court could have fucking heard me. But um, I don't know. I still like that rapper's albums, at least the stuff from the late 80s, early 90s. You're eventually going to figure this out. But... uh, Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you ever have the urge to throw an eight-year-old off a fucking <laughs> mezzanine level? I didn't want to do that, but, you know, it's just like, will you shut the fuck up? Just shut up, all of you. All of you shut up. None of you can make a fucking layup. Just shut up already. It's a fucking all-star game. So anyways, let's get back to the weed. Let's get back to the weed. So, so I go to the sports bar, and I'm hanging out, and we started talking about, you know, I'm still not boozing, right? 135 fucking days here, people. This is getting serious, you know? This is like I, I sort of hung out with somebody in a cult, and you're like, yeah, Bill's too smart for this shit, you know? And then one day I show up with the shaved head and that glassed over look at my eye, talking about waiting for the spaceship. I'm 135 fucking days in, people. I don't know if I'm coming back. Oh, you fucking booze hounds out there. I, I think you might have lost me. Ah, oh, the urge is still there. Oh, God, I'd love to tear down a fucking beer stand. Um, so anyway, so we were talking about the difference between, you know, booze versus weed. And um, and I, I basically told him, I said, yeah, I don't think there's anything, especially now with like a vaporizer. Um, I don't, you know, that has to be way more healthier than drinking like three beers. And that's seriously, that's another thing too. Like when, when potheads go like, you know, you come home. After work, you have a beer. I smoke a joint. It's like, no, dude, that is different. I, I drink a beer. I'm not drunk. You know? You smoke a joint. That's like drinking, like, what? Three, four beers. I think it is anyways. Whatever. So this, this is what I think the difference is. I think the fact because weed is not legal, that's why it leads to other drugs. You basically, you left the legal world and now you've dipped your toe into illegal. And I think it's really easy to go from weed to be like, eh, shrooms. You know, it's his cousin. It's no biggie. I have you, you know. And then there's, there's and then cocaine is kind of further in the back of that room. And then right behind cocaine is a big steel fucking door 
like that maniac used to come out of in the, in the uh, Texas Chainsaw uh, Massacres. You slide that fucker open, and in there, that's where heroin, meth, oxy, and all that shit is in there, all right? Which I don't think just because you smoke weed that you go to that, but they're, they're, that's what I will say. That, you know, when, when people who smoke weed go, dude, it doesn't lead to harder drugs. And yeah, it does. I think it does. It doesn't always. You know, there's people who smoke crack and they don't become addicted. They I tried it once. I was like, whatever. And then other people lose their entire lives. There is exceptions to it. Be, but be honest with me, potheads. All right. Like, I, this is what I want to know. How many people out there have just tried, just, you know, been drunk, you know, tried alcohol, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Never tried weed, but did try mushrooms. Like, I've done two drugs, uh, alcohol and mushrooms. You know, alcohol and Coke. I, I, like, I, I bet you would be hard-pressed to find somebody who doesn't have weed in there. It goes beer, weed, shrooms, or beer, weed, Coke, depending on what you want to feel, right? If you want to hallucinate or if you want to feel like Charlie Sheen. Huh? How fucking amazing was that whole thing? I loved all you know, I, I'm on Twitter, by the way. I finally gave in. Joe Rogan signed me up to drop a fucking name there. Uh, I was doing his uh, awesome podcast, which you guys should all check out. Um, I was doing his podcast, and he was beside himself that I wasn't signed up to Twitter. And I've been shitting all over Twitter, tweeting and all that type of thing, saying I don't want to fucking do it, and I'm gradually becoming addicted to it. And, of course, I don't have... We'll have it up on the mmpodcast.com where I'm, where I'm located. I've been, uh, you know, I've learned how to attach pictures. And, uh, you know, I feel like a little schoolgirl right now. I'm all excited. I'm cutting. I'm pasting. I'm typing. Socializing. Um, ah, fuck. What the hell was I talking about? Did I feel, okay, weed, coke, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Oh, you cunt, Bill. What is wrong with your brain? My brain goes in, goes in a straight line. If I try to go back, I'm fucked. The fuck was I talking about? Oh, Charlie Sheen. There we go. Thank God. Charlie Sheen. All right. I'm going to have to start doing this thing live so I can start taking college just for that specific thing that when I lose my train of thought, they can just tell me what the fuck I was talking about. Or I could get an assistant. You know, I could do something like that. Charlie Sheen. I was amazed at the amount of people that took what he was saying at face value. Kathy Lee Grifford, to bring her up again. She was like, I thought his statements were selfish. They were self-centered. It was like, you don't think he was high? I can't say he was high because that would be slander. But what the fuck? Why is my voice cracking? Oh, I know, because I was yelling in that sports bar. What the fuck? When it's time to change. Um, That guy, he sounded like... He sounded, okay, for the legal department, not saying it was coke. He sounded like somebody high on cocaine, you know, right when you're hitting that peak before the paranoia comes in, from what I've heard. Not so you guys think that I'm out there doing coke. I can't do it. I'm too fucking paranoid as it is, you know. That I'm the shit right up the mountain would be, would be very short for me. And then it would just go right down to I think everybody's watching me. Uh, I'm going to go hide in a fucking broom closet. Um Yeah, he just sounded like he was fucking high out of his mind. And I was actually kind of annoyed by the guy who was interviewing him because I just felt like he was sort of enabling him, you know? And you kind of saw in that, at least I'm totally judging this because who knows? I don't know either one of those fucking guys. But it was like, you see how celebrities OD because people are just so psyched to be fucking around them that they look the other way. The guy at one point goes like, uh, you know, I saw you the other day. You seemed fine. You know, we were at your house in your media room watching Apocalypse Now. And you, you seem fine. <laughs> it's like, you fucking star fucker. Give me a goddamn. You're, you're with Charlie Sheen watching Apocalypse Now in his media room in his fucking mansion. There's no way. You're going to criticize him in that moment. That would be like me hanging out with Jimmy Page, watching the song remains the same. He's falling down drunk, and he looks at me like, hey, mate, you think I got a drinking problem? Nah, Jimmy, you're fine. Hey, can I play one of these guitars? I can have the guitar? Dude, you're awesome. Who the fuck? I mean, there's no way you're going to criticize anybody, you know? If I could go uh, fucking watch The Godfather... 
over Al Pacino's house. Well, I guess that's that's not the same because Charlie Sheen's not in Apocalypse Now. Whatever. Al Pacino have any kids? You know what the fuck I'm saying. I don't know. So whatever. I felt bad for the guy. I hope he, uh, you know, I hope he turns his life around. But I also felt that he, I thought he made some decent points. There was a lot of points, and I was just like, hey, you know, he's, he's sort of hands on. <laughs> I'm, I'm lying to you. Actually, I only listened to half that shit. Um, all right. Before we get into the podcast here, can I tell you about the cunt at the bank that I ran into this week? Oh, can you hear it? Can you hear it? What the fuck is my fucking phone? What the hell is it? All right. Do you guys really want to listen to me hunt for my fucking phone? The hunt for Red October? Um, all right. So I'm sitting outside my bank, you know, because I worked hard all week. And why would I want the money when I can just go and give it to these thieving motherfuckers? Oh, sure, I can have it at home, right? Then I got to worry that people will figure out that I'm, I'm cashing my checks and I'm bringing them home. And next thing you know, the outside of my apartment looks like the end scene at the end of fucking Scarface, right? Bunch of sweaty, long-haired psychos, you know, climbing over my non-existent walls. And behind all of them, some guy who's walk, walking as slow as Jason in Friday the 13th, knowing that he's going to get the fucking kill shot. Um, so anyways, I'm sitting outside the bank and I'm on a conference call, you know, talking about some bullshit, you know, pitching some fucking idea. You know, all right, you know, we'll take 10 whores, we'll stick them in a house and we'll call it uh, the fucking whore challenge. And you fucking we'll get fucking Bob Saget to host it, whatever the fuck I was saying, right? So... As I'm sitting there outside the bank in the parking lot in my car, uh, this woman, this lady pulls up in this Mercedes, right? And I'm on the phone. She opens the door right into my fucking car. Boom. Doesn't look at my car, closes her car door, and just walks into the fucking bank. And I'm sitting there like beside myself going, did she just open the car door into my fucking car? Because she sort of mind fucked me because I heard it, but she didn't do a ooh or oh my god, I'm sorry. She didn't look. She just acted like it didn't even happen. I was like, you know, you know, the hybrid because it goes from like the gas engine to the electric engine. Sometimes when it when it turns over, it causes the car to shake a little bit. And sometimes like one of my podcasts that time when I thought that guy rear ended me, that's what happened. So I was like, is that some sort of hybrid shit or whatever? So I go back to the phone conversation. Here she comes out again. And now, you know, I'm looking at her. You know, she's got a little midriff showing, you know, a little blondie. And I'm like already starting to judge her. And she comes walking again, opens her car door right into my car. So I'm on this conference call with like fucking industry people. I go, hey, can you guys hang on a second? I should have hit mute and I didn't. All right. So I put, I beep the horn and I go, I go, hey, hey. I put the window down. She's like, what? I go, you just opened your door into my car. I did? Yes. You did it on the way into the bank and on the way out. She's like, well, I didn't chip the paint. That's what she said. And I was like, what do you mean you didn't chip the paint? You you didn't even look. How would you know? Why don't you be a little more considerate next time and look what the hell you're doing? Boom. And I slammed the door shut. Right? Right? So I go back to the car. I go, sorry about that, guys. They're like, ooh, what's everything all right on that end, Bill? No, it isn't all right. You heard what happened, you fucking jerk. You don't have any, you know, you don't have any, uh, you know, confrontations, right? So she goes, uh, then I just hear her with my window up. I can just hear her going, have a nice day, smile. She starts doing that shit. Like, I'm this asshole, like... Me getting upset that you opened your fucking car door into me twice without a care in the world. Like, my natural reaction is not supposed to get upset. You know what I mean? I don't know. You know, I don't believe in that whole heaven and hell shit. But I think that that episode right there is, you know, if there is this whole judgment, that was one in favor of me. The fact that I didn't call her a cunt, you know, right there. You know what I mean? She ends up giving me the finger. Like somehow she's been wrong. I swear to God, dude. I just wanted to take my fucking passenger side door, open it up and fucking ram, ram, ram. Like three fucking times right into her goddamn car. And then just go, I didn't chip the paint. This is why I didn't. Two reasons. One, because it was abroad. 
All right? If it was a guy, I wouldn't do it because what if he comes over and beats the shit out of me? Who's, hit, who's getting who? Okay? You know, if you want to have like a, a, a street fight, like a, a brother on brother fight where we both end giving each other, in, you know, in simultaneous headlocks going, you give, you give, I'll have a fight like that. But I, I you know, average random dude, I'm not fighting the guy. I'm 42 fucking years old. Okay? I'm going to get my ass kicked. But now that it was a woman, I can't do it because she could get out of her fucking car and just start smashing up my car. And there's really nothing I can do to try and physically stop her because she's a lady, right? And that's the first reason. And then the second reason is I've watched enough sports to realize that uh, the refs always see the retaliation. They never see the initial thing. So it's like she fucking hits me twice. Nobody sees it, and then I fucking slam Mike, and then I, you know, I would be like, hey, she did it to me first, and I, and I would fucking lose, so I didn't do anything, and, uh, oh, the fucking thoughts I had afterward of wishing I followed her, you know, in my quiet hybrid <laughs> to wherever the hell she lived, and I wanted to carve into her driver's side door either cunt and I was like, ah, that's un- that's unoriginal. I-, I I wanted to carve in. I didn't chip the paint into the side. Or maybe I did chip the paint. LOL, laughing my ass off, OMG, or just some dumb shit. You know? Ugh, what a f- I, you know, You know what kills me? Is she's out there. You know, she probably told the story later on that day. Where I would just, I would love to hear her version of that fucking story. Uh, how she was the victim. You know? It's just... I can tell if it was because she was hot and she's not used to somebody actually calling her on her shit or if she's a product of the combination, the timeout generation and that generation for the last fucking 35, I don't know, 35 years, for the last, I don't know, 25 fucking years, the parenting, at least in this country, I don't know what happened. It's like it went from when I was a kid where whatever your neighbor said you did, your parents believed Whatever your teacher said you did, your parent, whatever an adult said that you were doing and you were out of a, and you were out of line, parents just said, "Oh, is that what he's doing? I'm going to have a talk with them." Mister Robinson down the street says, "You jumped over his fence. You were you went you were jumping in his pool, and you tried to lie. Ah, don't give me that shit." Get upstairs and go in your fucking room. Whatever. They don't do that anymore. The last like 25 years, it's like if a, if a somebody says something to somebody, hey, basically your kid's being a fuckhead right now, they just automatically defend their kid. Straight through the whole thing. They defend their kid. You can't go over to somebody's house. You got to have a fucking play date. You don't get the shit kicked out of you. You don't get hit or anything. You get a timeout. You know? And then I think, you know, 25 fucking years later, you're in a bank fucking opening your goddamn door into somebody's car. You're A, surprised that they're mad, and B, don't think you did anything fucking wrong. Time out. Look at hockey. You go and they beat the shit out of somebody. They just make the guy sit down for five minutes. You know? Does he learn anything? Ah, like he comes out, he fucking beats him up again. <laughs> hey, by the way, how about those Bruins? Huh? Beating a very, 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 very strong Vancouver Canuck team. That was a big fucking victory for us. But I think we're 4-0 oh, in the fucking road trip, dude. All right, let's get to the topics for this week. Um, topic number one for the classic. Is it racist, 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 racist? Um, oh, before I get into that, before I get into that, um, here's something you might want to read up on. Last week when I was talking about the uh, the the whores that go to the all-star game and that type of shit. Um, there's somebody sent me an article that we will have linked on the, uh, the MM podcast.com. Uh, it was an article that came out in 2006 in GQ magazine where one of the writers hung out with some groupies, some NBA groupies and that type of thing. And, um, what is really, it's a really interesting article. And what is also really interesting is she never really gets to talk to any of the whores that are really doing the dirt. You know what I mean? She talks to three girls who, well, we might if it happened, but who knows? We're just here to have fun. 
that's how tight that circle is. It's a really interesting article. Well, I'll have the link up on the mmpodcast.com, the official pan, fan page of the Monday Morning Podcast. And now let's get to the topic. Is it right? Is it right? Is it right? Um, all right, Bill. While flipping the channels the other night, I happened to catch the end of America's Funniest Home Videos. Um, <clears throat> America's Funniest Home Videos. The family that won on this particular night was a white family with what I assumed was an adopted black daughter uh, who was maybe six or seven years old. Anyways, after they announced the winners, the host shook each of the family members' hands. But when he got to the little girl, he put his hand up and asked for a high five, (laughs) which immediately made me livid. I'm not saying it was necessarily racist, but I hate it when white people call me brother or want to give me complicated handshakes when they barely know me. Can you please tell your listeners to knock that shit off? LOL. Um, You know what's fucking funny about that is, yeah, I agree with you. It isn't racist, but it is a uh, annoying sort of uh, pandering or ingratiating yourself to black culture. Yeah, I can see, I, I, I know what you're saying. I just don't know how to verbalize it. The only way I can really describe it is you guys, anybody out there buy that P90X? I recommend it. It's great. I just go on the road, so I can't do the diet. So it didn't work for me, but Nia has been doing it lately. And, uh, she brought up something. I forgot what's really funny on those tapes. I, I don't, I can't remember the names of the people there, but there's like, you know, a white guy, like two white chicks and then a black dude. So he goes around the room saying hello to everybody. This is Pam. They call her Blam. Right? And he just, you know, going, this is Jerry. He's a Taekwondo guy. Watch out for this guy. You know, this is so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. And then he walks up to the black guy. And let's just say his name is like, you know, whatever, James. And he goes, and he'd be like, what's up, James, my brother? <laughs> Every fucking disc. He calls him my brother, and then he, he goes, like, high pitch, my brother. And it's, it's so, uh, I don't know, douche chills from the Opie and Anthony. I think, believe Opie and Anthony came up with that expression, or that's at least where I heard it first. Douche chills every time I hear that. Um, I totally agree with you. I don't think it's racist. It's just some sort of – it's like if you met somebody Asian, would you bow, you know? That's, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. That's fucking funny. Um, I, and I've been guilty of doing uh, a semi. You know the the the, the handshake, the uh, I, I don't know, the mainstream one. What was it grab the thumb, slide of the hand, the snap thing? That thing was there for a while. I, I don't even fucking know. But I will not do a fist bump with anybody, even if uh, even if there's a black guy there. I still won't do it. I'll just assume that he's still hanging out with too many white people, and that's why he's still doing a a pound. Um, all right, next one. Um, hey, Bill, <clears throat> I just finished up a conversation on Facebook with some female friends of mine. Um, long story short, I asked if they were on Twitter. They replied, we don't Twitter. And I replied, all right, well, whenever you ladies realize that you're missing out on the greatest social network since the Underground Railroad, just follow me at, and he wrote his Twitter name. He said, "What was my comment racist in your opinion? Um, no. First of all, you guys, you got to let me know what race you are, too. So I, I'm assuming that you're white. No, that isn't racist. That's what overly sensitive people would think that it's racist because you made a reference to something that involved, uh, they, they, they do, this happens to me a lot in stand-up where people don't look at the context in which you're saying something. You're basically saying the Underground Railroad is the greatest social network or Twitter is the greatest one since the Underground Railroad. So doesn't that mean that you think that the Underground Railroad was a great thing? The Underground Railroad was was Africans uh, escaping slavery. So, no, I think it's actually it's a good reference. I think you're guilty of making a good reference. But if you're around a bunch of overly sensitive people they would immediately think because you brought up something that had to do with slavery on some level that you somehow advocated, <clears throat> advocated slavery. Um, that happens a lot in stand-up where people don't listen to what you're saying. Or if you make a reference to slavery, they then think that, well, because you made a reference to it, then you obviously advocate it. Um, um, so no, I don't think that that is a uh, – 
I don't think that that's racist. All right, let's plow ahead. Next one. Is it racist? racist, racist? Uh, Bill, here's one for you. I'm 35, but when I was about 23, for some reason, I went to a bunch of stores looking for a specific CD. CDs, back when they had those things. Um, so I come from a middle-class family and went to high school, a high school that was like 90210. It was almost entirely white. So I find myself in this store looking for what I thought was a CD by Snoop Dogg. I felt like an idiot, and I'm standing in there in khakis and a polo while uh, the other white kid behind the counter reads a list of available CD titles by Snoop Dogg um, as I try to remember the name that I'm looking for. All right, he didn't really set that up. So he goes into the store. He finds another white kid who works there. He's dressed in khakis and polos and says that he's looking for a Snoop Dogg CD. So now the white kid behind the counter is reading off titles of Snoop Dogg albums. He goes, try to imagine him, the white kid, looking down at the computer screen and him reading the title. He goes, Snoop upside, and then looking at me straight in the eyes, finishing sarcastically with your head. Snoop Upside Your Head, I guess was the name of the album. Uh, He goes, I never felt so white, LOL. Discouraged, I leave for another store across the street in the mall. As I walk in, I immediately spot one of the token black kids that graduated with me. Um, Now, right there, that's an offensive, uh, that's offensive to a lot of people. Token black kids, you know, that's when you go to the all-white school, and then there was like one black kid, uh, that kid's always called the token. So that's offensive all the way to racist depending on how I would think. Um, but whatever, let's plow ahead here. Um, so anyways, he sees you know the one black kid he basically went to high school with. I, he said, I was like, thank God, LOL. I stop him and say, Antoine, listen, man. Listen, man. He throws in a man. <laughs> I have a question for you. What is the name of that Snoop Dogg CD with the blah, blah, blah song on it? Of course, there was the awkward... What are you asking me? You're asking me because I'm black, right? Is the question he asked. And as I'm standing there stumped for a response, he said, it's not Snoop, it's not Snoop Dogg, it's Dr. Dre, and the CD is The Chronic. Uh, he said, now, feeling like a true idiot, I try to make some ridiculous small talk. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, I knew I went to the right source as he confirmed, but what are your thoughts? Is that racist? No. No, it's not racist. The token black guy thing, I, out of everything you said, was the thing that I would, would raise the red flag where I would, if I was in a conversation with you, you know that shit where one white guy's talking to another white guy he doesn't know, then out of nowhere, something sort of in the gray area comes into the conversation. And from, you know, then there's always that tense moment of like, is this going to take a fucking right turn down to an unpaved road, <laughs> down to a shack? Um, no, it isn't. It's not racist at all. And it was proven because he knew the fucking answer. Yeah, I mean, you're, maybe you're guilty of racially profiling. I think you, you went really efficient. It's not like you didn't try to ask another white kid. He had no idea. And he was a cunt. He almost seemed like he was judging you because you were, uh, you, you were, you were buying the music. Or in general, he just didn't like rap music. But you saw the black dude you went to school with? That's fucking what he asked me because I'm black. You should have said Yes. What am I supposed to ask some redneck? Well, what, what would happen if I walked up to you and asked, hey, what, what's, what's the name of that new Travis Tritt album? He'd probably be like, what the fuck are you asking a black guy that question for? You know? If somebody came up to me and said, hey, Bill, what's the name of that beer that, uh, that's famous that Ireland makes? I wouldn't, get offend- I wouldn't get offended by that. You know, or if they assumed that I drank because I'm Irish, even though I'm mostly German. All right, but I but because I have I, I don't get offended when people assume that I'm mostly Irish. I mean, it's not like I don't look like a fucking leprechaun. Um, I think that that falls into uh, being overly sensitive. But I feel that guy's entitled to considered considering he seemed like he was the only black guy in his school, and other white kids referred to him as the token. <laughs> and despite all that, he was still nice enough to tell you what CD to buy. See that that had a nice warm fuzzy ending. All right, um, another one. Dear Bill, hey, by the way, my reading's getting a lot better. I got to pat, pat myself on the back. Pat, pat, pat myself on the back. My speaking still sucks. Oh, Jesus. Uh, dear Bill, I recently moved to downtown Denver from Fort Collins. Oh, Jesus. Is that up near Greeley, Colorado, where they have the bad smell day? I know I've talked about this before on the podcast, but just in case there's new listeners out there, in Greeley, Colorado, they have a slaughterhouse. 
up there where, uh, you know, if you ever wondered where your fucking hamburgers and steaks and all that shit came from, Greeley, Colorado is a good guess. And uh, some days when it's really windy up there and they've murdered a bunch of fucking steer, uh, they have what's known as bad smell days. And what you do is you call up the slaughterhouse and you say, hey, can you can you fucking cool it a little bit up there? We can smell it all the way down here. We can smell the murder. This way. And then they actually sort of, uh, I don't know what they do, take a 15-minute break from killing the steers or whatever? I don't fucking know. A steer, by the way, is a bull without balls. I had no idea what that was. I knew what a cow was. I knew what a bull was. I didn't know what a steer was. Steer is a bull without balls, and uh, those are the things that they, uh, they use for all your steak and hamburger, I believe. I don't think they use the cows. They use the cows for the milk. They use the bulls to fuck the cows to make more cows and to make uh, more bulls. And then they cut their balls off and they make them steers. Is that how it works? Right? Did I learn that in my travels <clears throat> out there on the road? Correct me if I'm wrong there, Southerners. What are you asking me because I'm from the South? Yes, you pig fucking jackass. Answer the question. All right, here we go. Dear Bill, I recently moved to downtown Denver from, a, from, a, from Fort Collins a small college town north of Denver. The only black people I had, uh, had been used to seeing were either exchange students from Africa or Colorado State football basketball players. My new home in Denver is, is a neighborhood that is known for having a high black population. To cut to the point, I've noticed while driving around my place that black people, generally younger black guys, do not respect jaywalking laws at all. I noticed, that this, I noticed this after the fifth time in one day that a black dude had walked right out into traffic expecting that the drivers would hit their brakes and wait for him to cross the street. Now I, see, now I see this happen every day. When I got home, I brought it to the attention of my roommates and girlfriend, and they thought I was crazy. But soon enough, they all began to notice this phenomenon, and now it's a big inside joke amongst us. Uh, also, I don't know if you've seen that there are quite a few popular YouTube videos that show exactly what I'm talking about. One video that I think you may have talked about showed a black guy dance his way into traffic until an ice cream truck put a stop to that. Is it racist that I notice this? Also, is this just a Denver thing or does it happen elsewhere? Uh, jaywalking happens, uh, I think, all over the world, and every race does it as far as I know. Um, <clears throat> this one is a little complex because there's a lot of levels to this because you don't seem like you have hatred in your heart. Um, and also, I haven't been to your neighborhood. If that's what people do, you know, then that's what they do there. I lived in New York City, and we all do it. All, everybody. 80-year-old fucking uh, women from the Astor family jaywalk when then, you know, over to their fucking town car to go visit their bars of gold. Um, everybody jaywalks. So I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't, yeah, obviously, black people aren't the only ones who jaywalk. But uh, in your neighborhood, if that's what everybody does, uh, I mean, that's not racist to notice that. Uh, I think to, to just say that it's just black people. Um, I don't, I, you know what, this is, these, these are getting, these are getting difficult. Because I got to hear what you're doing with that information. You know, you did have your little clan moment where you convinced the people that you're living with. I'm telling you, go out there, go out there and look at them. And then they came back, holy shit, you're right. Now, how offensive is it that just because, you know, you're from Denver, why am I giving you a southern accent? See, we're all full of shit here. Um, ah, fuck, I just had a point there. What the hell was I going to try to make? Yeah, I mean, I'd have to know if you were just saying, like, you know, if you take it to the level, I guess, uh, where you, 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 you're going, like, you know, I, you know, the obvious level to take this where it would obviously be racist if you were just like, we got to get we got to get all the black people out of this country. They're all these jaywalking sons of bitches. They're ruining this country. Or, uh, you know, I don't want my daughter dating a black guy. Why? Because they're jaywalking sons of bitches or whatever. I mean, I don't fucking know if you're just sort of noticing this and, you're, and you think it's funny. That they do this shit. Kind of like when I do that older Asian thing. I don't have anything to get a Asians or uh, old people. If you're fucking around, like, no. I mean, it's probably offensive, like my older Asian thing, which I guess that that, my, that game is offensive to some people. Um, yeah, is it racist that you noticed? 
I mean, it did happen. I guess it's when you start thinking that that uh, all black people in general, like Bill Cosby is walking out of his mansion and Jay walks across the street to, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where to go with that one. Yeah, no. But I'll tell you this, dude. Everybody jaywalks, and I am one of the major offenders of it. I do it all the fucking time. All right? I don't got fucking time to walk down to the goddamn corner. I don't understand what the fucking point is. I get it. Look both ways, and if there's nothing coming, then go. But if something's coming, don't go. I get that. All right? Jaywalking, uh, I think those laws are basically invented. They're basically so they, A, can keep traffic moving, and B, um, don't have to clean up a lot of dead people in the street because there's a lot of bad drivers. And there's also a lot of people who can't see that well or cross the street correctly. Maybe that's why. I don't fucking know. All right, now we're into advice. Is this one of these ones where I'm just reading too much rather than riffing? Is that, is that what the fuck's going on here? You know what? I'm going to talk about YouTube videos. Maybe they'll fucking stir up some sort of, some sort of comedy here. I feel like I'm on fucking Meet the Press. Um, YouTube videos. Um, check this one out. Remember a few weeks ago when I showed that dude Johnny Mac, the QB, doing all those trick shots? Uh, somebody made an answer video. Somebody else threw his fucking football helmet into the ring. Some guy, Alex, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Tanny. Alex Tanny's video. And this is what I got to say about all these, these trick shot QB things. The ones that are, that are most impressive is when they do more than one trick without an edit. Those are the ones that I like. But, uh, you know, other than that, these are pretty impressive. So check that one out. Um, here's, here's is a classic YouTube video. Woman beats up boyfriend, keeps yelling fight back. All these videos will be up on the MM Podcast. And I, this is some inside information that I'll give you. I never name names. All right. But there's a friend of mine who wrote a very successful movie after watching this video. All right. And in this video, there is a woman beating the shit out of a guy. A big woman. Okay. So think of some comedies that came out in the last, oh shit, what was it? I think it was like five years ago it came out. And uh, why don't I just tell you? The movie's Norbert. The guy I know who wrote the movie wrote the movie after seeing this video. He thought this video was fucking hilarious and said, that's a movie. And then he wrote it and then it got made. And I remember standing there going, wow, it's that fucking easy. You just have to sit down and do the goddamn work. You know? Um, All right. Next one. Magnetic Kid. What the fuck is that? Did I even watch that one? Seven-year-old kid claims he's magnetic. I somehow missed that one. Um, Drunk guy on the news, you have to see. This is the best one of the week, I think, as far as fucking hilarity. This guy is out of his mind. And speaking of racist, 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 this guy gets real, he's really drunk and he starts talking about his neighbors. And he goes, now, I'm telling you, just warning you right now, I never liked those people. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say something racist, right? <laughs> And he's so drunk, he never gets around to it. But the, one of the funniest things in this video, aside from the unbelievably long pauses this guy takes between talking, is how the, the reporter keeps trying to give the guy the out. He's like, did you start drinking because you were so distraught from the fire? And the guy's like, no. <laughs> you know, like, I've been drinking all fire. I was drinking before the fire, during it, and after it. You know, that's just basically... His whole vibe. Now, here's a video people keep sending me. I don't know why people find this thing funny. I find the voiceover to be unbelievably annoying. It says, crazy, nasty-ass honey badger. And I guess it's making fun of all the videos showing how badass the honey badger is. But this guy sounds like he's doing a really bad impression of a sitcom character that's gay. And uh, he just he's annoying after a while. Uh, conspiracy theorists out there. New World Order documentary we have. And um, I actually got this one, Chevy 1991 S10 commercial. Uh, One of the people I follow on YouTube, he does a bunch of uh, really good Zeppelin covers. And he throws up random videos every once in a while. So I saw it on his channel. Uh, It was Beau Fershard, I believe his name is. B-E-A-U. Just type in that and then look up Zeppelin if you're a drummer. Um, He fucking... Kills a bunch of different Zeppelin tracks. 
And all right, those are the YouTube videos for this week. And uh, do I have anything else to talk about? I think I'll just go into fucking advice, and then we'll wrap this goddamn thing up. We will wrap it up. Oh, this week, by the way, I'm going to be in Miami. All right? I'm going to be in Miami at the, uh, the fucking Fuckfest Theater. Where the hell am I going to be? Hang on a second. Let me, let me get the information for you, all right? You just sit tight. You sit tight in your goddamn cubicle. All right? Start fucking scratching your chin as you're looking at those spreadsheets like, ugh, that's odd. All right, I'm at the New World Symphony, 517th Street, Miami Beach, Florida. Also, for those of you in Utah, I added I added a date in uh, March, March 18th and March 19th. I'm going to be at Wise Guys in West Valley City, Utah. Uh, probably going to hang around for another day to go fucking skiing. Oh, I know what I want to tell you guys. I finally committed to the sport of hockey. Told you I've been playing ice hockey out here, and all I had, I had the helmet with the full cage in the front because who's kidding who? My dream of making it to the NHL died sometime, I believe, oh, about 1984. Um, <laughs> I was never good. I always sucked. So I would go, I've been playing. I, I Helmet, I have the full face mask, and I had the gloves, sticks, skates, obviously. That's all I had, and I got to tell you, as a 42-year-old man, falling down on the fucking ice that is not a good feeling so i finally just said to hell with it and i went out and i bought all the gear head to toe i have all the fucking pads and it made uh made all the difference in the world dude you go down you don't feel anything you don't feel anything it's fucking tremendous it's like falling uh falling on it not pillows but it's it's the shit so uh so anyway, so what I've been doing is, you know, I hate going to the fucking gym. So I either take my dog for a hike or recently for cardios, they have, you know, they have the public skating thing. So I'll go down there like a fucking pedophile, <laughs> you know, 42-year-old single white male, never married, no kids. I swear to God, I won't even look at a child when I am in there. I won't. I fucking, I just skate around and I fucking mind my own business. So anyway, I go down there. And uh, I basically work on shit that I suck at that you can work on it during a public skating thing, which is basically I suck at stopping on my right side. So I just started working on that. And uh, I can turn around to skate backwards, but I'm not good. I'm more left-handed than I am right-handed, so I'm not good. Yet I shoot the puck right-handed. I'm fucked. So I can't turn around to the right side good. So the only way you improve in life is if you attack your weaknesses. So I start learning it, right? And I'm crossing over and everything's going great. And then what happens? I get a little cocky. Oh, Jesus, right? And I'm fucking my version of flying. I'm probably going three quarters of the speed that, uh, that I can skate. And I fucking turn around. And, dude, I don't know what the fuck happened. Because I, you know, I'll fall, but I can fall gracefully at this point. This was like I had a beginner fall and I was going backwards at about 17 miles an hour. And I didn't fall on my side. I didn't, I didn't get my hands down, nothing. I fell, I fell like a fucking tree. And I landed right on my ass. And then I got my right elbow down at the last second so my head didn't hit the ice. But my brain still smacked. And like I was dizzy when I got up. But, dude, I swear to God, I don't know how I didn't break my tailbone. I fucking, like my ass was killing me. I had to, I, 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 I skated off the ice. That was it. I was done. I went off the ice and I sat down and I collected myself, you know, and I had snow all over my backside. <laughs> oh, I missed the best part. And when I fell down and I, I fucking went to try, I just kind of stayed there for half a second. Like, did I just break my fucking tailbone? Did I really just do that? And I, and I didn't feel any sort of, you know, pain beyond I just busted my ass on the ice. So as I roll over, some like 11 year old kid skates by and does the Simpson, ha ha, and then keeps going. I got to admit, I didn't get, even get mad at him. I was just like, I said, I know it. I went, I know it. And then I got up and it wasn't until I was driving home that that kid actually annoyed me and I dreamed of cross-checking him into the glass, you know, which is, which is childish. But uh, yeah, so I'm playing again this week and um, definitely having a good time. It's so much better than going to the gym and um, I... Having fallen on the ice there by myself, I have a whole new respect for, like, contact sports. Like, people who play them at, like, you know, professional fucking levels or even just pickup games like, uh, 
you know, I was seriously like, there was like, I had to collect myself. Like I said, like, I can't imagine doing that shit for a fucking living. I mean, skating is hard enough. Forget about some guy trying to knock you over when you're not looking. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's unfucking believable. So it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I'm bored with it already. Um, all right, let's, let's read some advice and then I'm getting the, getting the fuck out of here. Um, by the way, recently I've actually thought I've considered about uh, having some advertising here on the podcast. And I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, Jesus. Here he goes. He's going to sell out, man. Um, you're absolutely right. I am going to sell out. You know? What do you think? I want to keep it real and stay broke? <laughs> I'm not broke. I'm doing all right. But give me a fucking break, okay? Eventually, people, I'm not going to want to jump on a goddamn airplane, okay? And I don't want to charge you cunts anything, you know? So uh, I've been thinking about it. So, But I, I think I can still do it in a creative, cool way where I'll just have advertisers on here of shit that I like. Drum companies, booze, um, you know, shit like that. As long as I can read it and make fun of the copy, I will do it. Um, and I'll charge everybody $1.75 per episode. Um, I don't know. I'm going to try to figure something out. Um, all right, let's go to advice. Bill, advice. Um, so for the last five years, I've been teaching guitar lessons full-time at a very large music school in Chicago. Um, there are over 100 music teachers at this school with, with about 5,000 students every session. Half of those students are under 18. The school has been around for over 50 years and is globally recognized. Let me see if I can figure that out. Mm -mm. Oh, Chicago. I don't know that one. I was going to guess Berkeley. Now, I get an email from the new director of the school saying all of the staff are required to get their thumbs scanned by some company called Biometric. What? Biometric scans your thumbs into their watch system. We all already had uh, background checks done when we were hired, but now they argue that we need to have this done. Apparently, all of the public school teachers in their entire city are being forced to do this as well. Basically, anyone who is around any younger, who is around any younger, uh, pl please people, please proofread your shit. You make me sound dumb. I'm already dumb enough. Basically, anyone who is around any younger people, oh, for a profession is now mandated by their employee to get in this creepy biometric system. You see this shit? Have you guys noticed this? All this fucking screaming and yelling we do during every single election that comes around to pick the Democrat or the, or the Republican, it doesn't make a difference because when the real shit goes down, like approving, giving biometrics the right to do this, we don't get to vote on this. They don't even tell us about us. They just go, it's a law. It's mandatory. You have to do this. He, anyways, he says, I don't have anything to hide, but the mental picture of all of us Harmless musicians lining up like fucking cattle, having some stormtrooper asshole scanning my thumbprint into some supercomputer where it will stay forever is really depressing. Obviously, this is all done in the name of, air quote, protecting the children, but at what cost? Here's my question for you. I feel like this is my moment to take a stand. Should I make a deal, big deal about this and try to rally all the other teachers to fight this, or will I just look like I have something to hide? Uh, it is really, really hard to get a job at this school, so I'm scared to make waves. Do you feel like this protects kids from creeps? I should mention that in the school's 50-year his history, no incident of a teacher-student uh, misconduct has been recorded. Everyone knows that pedophiles can't play an instrument, LOL. Uh, and do you think um, they are making priests get thumb scans? I fucking bet not. All joking aside, I'm really bothered by this situation. What should I do, Bill? I don't know. I, the first thing I would do is I would talk to other teachers and see how they feel about it. I think that's complete horseshit. Dude, they, they have been basically working their way towards this since they first came up with photo IDs and social security numbers and all of that shit. It's all done under the whole guise of organization and your own fucking safety and... It's complete horseshit. It has to do with them eventually trying to have a very few people be able to make the decisions for all of us. That's basically what's going on. Okay? And the more information they have about you, the easier it is to be able to find you. I mean, think about that shit. They're going to have your thumbprint. They know what your fucking fingerprint looks like. All right? 
They're going to have an ability to freeze your fucking bank account and your cell phone has a goddamn microchip in it. Okay, so the second they, I mean, this is like end of day shit. And they got these fucking robots that they've been working on that can outperform human beings. I'm telling you, our days are fucking numbered. They had on Jeopardy the other day. They had two human beings playing against a fucking computer. Those two people, they're helping human beings get phased out. You should see I'm not competing against a fucking computer so you can figure out how it does against me and you can figure the computer's weaknesses and strong points so it can come back with even more game. And you can pump it back with more fucking information. So eventually, I become fucking useless. Unless, of course, I know how to build a robot or know how to grease its fucking joints. Yeah, dude, I think, yeah, I think it would be a very uh, noble thing if you complained about that. I think people need to complain more. I'm guilty of it. I fucking rant here on this podcast, but I've never been to a protest. But I don't think that it's right that they, that they pass a law. Like, whether you agree with that or not, that's not something that they should be able to pass without the voice of the people. We should be able to vote on something like that. That's fucking ridiculous. I just found out from my accountant the other day, after years of saying I'm not doing my shit online because I don't want to put all that information online, I now have no option. I have to do it online. You know, I, I, I don't want to put all my fucking information online. My tax ID numbers, my social security numbers. You're out of your fucking mind. You're letting people in to your entire financial history. You're letting in to your whole fucking, God knows what they can do with that. And they can ruin you. All right, all I'm doing is bitching here. But I don't know, that shit really, that's fucking creepy as hell. Um, I would talk to other people, be like, dude, hey, you know, what, what do you think about this? You know, sort of get it going. You know, just like how they started the revolution in this country. Hey, uh, you know, what do you think about those red coats? Yeah, they're kind of, uh, yeah, dicks, right? They're kind of dicks. Yeah, I don't like them either. All right, uh, question number two. Hey, Bill, this has been bothering me for a while now, and I'm not sure what to do. I'm 19 years old. I go to UMass Amherst. Oh, geez. Um, dude, that place is insane. Do you guys still party? The timeout generation, do you still party the way they used to, where they would actually have fatalities at that school? People used to ride the elevators. There was that classic urban myth about those kids bringing the cow up to the roof of the building and they didn't know how to get it off, so they just pushed it off the side and it exploded into uh, hamburger heaven. Um, anyways, I had a girlfriend my first semester of college uh, that was still in high school. We both knew that I was going to that we both knew that I was going far away and we but we agreed that we would stay together. However, I guess her feelings changed and she wanted to be single. I was devastated when she broke up with me, and I've been really down because she was the first girlfriend I had that I really liked, and uh, I wasn't just trying to get laid. I actually liked this girl. So after a few weeks, I found out she was hooking up with this kid that I considered to be a friend. Oh, boy. Because we had been hanging out over the summer and partying together. What's fucked up about the whole situation is that this isn't the first time this guy has done this to me. All right, you know what I just thought of when I read that sentence was, uh, what, was the, what was the name of that movie? Uh, Dead Presidents. You know, when the dude comes back into the pool hall with the stick and he beats the f- shit out of Terrence Howard? I, that's, I'm not saying to do that, but that's the first movie scene that came to my head. <laughs> Anyways, at the end of my senior year, I broke up with a different girl, and this kid was hooking up with her about a month later. I let that one slide. That's your fault, then, because... He said, because, again, I didn't really give a fuck about any other girlfriends I had before this previous one. Um, I don't want to be a crazy ex-boyfriend that gets defensive over girls that no longer like him. But should I or should I not tell this kid to back off and stop going after my ex-girlfriends? You definitely need to have a talk with that dude. You need to clear the air with him. and, um, And then you need to stop fucking with him. That's what I would do. And I would go somewhere along the lines of describing him as like, uh, you ever see those little fish that swim under the big fish? You know, they're not plankton. I don't know what the fuck they are. They swim under the whales, you know. Just ask him. It's like, dude, do you have an ability to get pussy without drafting behind me like somebody in the Tour de France? You know, if there was like pussy at the finish line, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, I don't know. Don't listen to me on how to say that stuff because I, I say fuck a lot and I'm an angry dude and you'll end up getting into a fist fight. But, uh, yeah, I would definitely say something to the kid. Uh, you know what would be funny if you called him up? Like, I don't know where you're from. You know, just say you're from, um, 
just say you're from L.A., just call them up and say, hey, listen, just to let you know, I've been recently hooking up with this chick from San Diego. Uh, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, send her a picture just to show you the next person that you're going to be fucking because evidently you love my sloppy seconds. You know, you fucking pervert. Are you gay for me or something? Do you just want to be where my dick has been? You know, for the love of God, go get yourself a boyfriend. There you go. Hit him with the homophobia. That's a good one. Not that I advocate homophobia, but when you use it, it can be your friend. Uh, that didn't even make sense. All right, Bill. Hey, Bill, I'm 24 and have four kids. Jesus Christ. What is that, the fucking 1800s? What do you, what do you got? What do you got? Some fucking, do you need some farmhands, sir? Somebody go clean out the silo or fill it up? Oh, good Lord. You guys make your own clothes? I'm 24 and I have four kids. I'm married. I feel bad for this guy. I should make fun of him. I work for public utilities doing very hard manual labor. And I work hard for my money, which goes straight to my wife and four kids. Basically, when politicians run for office and they try to stand on the shoulders of hardworking Americans, this is the guy right here. This is the guy that like Sam Elliott talks about. Speaking of that, I recently saw one of those Coors commercials. Have you seen that? The Rocky Mountains go down this country like a backbone. And we make our beer the way the fuck we want to, and that's what having a backbone is all about. you got to have a backbone to make a light beer that looks and tastes like piss. A watered-down, shitty beer that comes from the backbone Rocky Mountains. You know something? I think whenever you have a pussy product, you know, one of the red flags is you get Sam Elliott to do the voiceover, you know? Because you're like, oh, my God, people are going to see right through the fact that, I mean, come on, people, Coors. It's one of those beers when, like, you're hungover that you actually drink. That's like vitamin water for an alcoholic. <laughs> They're trying to tie it into the fucking Rocky Mountains. I mean, I know I know they, they get their fucking water from the Rocky Mountains. Go down this country like a backbone. Her, uh, uh, tough guy shit uh, give me some of that skull bandit uh, core light oh, Jesus um, anyways where the fuck am I how the fuck did I even start talking about that the other day I got a call from work uh, the other day I, I got a call from her okay let, let's, 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 let's reset this up again the guy's 24 years old he has 17 kids no he has 4 kids he's married works for public utilities does very hard manual labor he works his fucking ass off and all his money goes straight to his fucking wife and his kids all right. The other day I got a call from her at work and she told me to meet her at the doctor's office because she doesn't like taking the kids to the doctor alone. When I get there, she starts yelling at me as usual, red flag, and they and then said – then she said, all you know how to do is work. So why don't you just go back to work and saying all I do is pick up after you and the kids and basically calling me a loser for working and making money. I'm doing my best to provide for my kids. She takes my money. She spends my money on stupid shit. We've been married for a year and four months now. But you got four kids. Did you have quadruplets, sir? What happened? I don't know, Bill. I'd just like to hear your take on the situation and give me some advice. All right. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. All right. All right. First things first. I don't know what you said. Before, she said, all you know how to do is work, so why don't you go back to work? That could have been anything from her actually being a jerk to her saying, yeah, Philip has a cold. And you said, uh, yeah, uh, which one's Philip? We got so many fucking kids. Which one, which one is he? Is he, is he the little uh, rusty-haired one? And then she, ah, oh, well, you know how to do is work. Why don't you go back to work? You know, if she said it like that, then what can you do? Um, but it doesn't seem... I don't know. The fact that she's saying all I do is pick up after you and the kids. Uh, this, this is what you need to do. The worst thing that you can do um, when you want somebody to hear your point is to be a fucking asshole like me. It's like when I, when I approach that lady at the bank. You know, I, I, she didn't hear what I was saying because, A, she's, you know, a... She's a cunt, all right? Who's kidding who? But beyond that was I was a dick to her. So no one's going to listen to you if you're a dick. So if you really – if you want to stay with this woman, right, 
you're going through a rough period in your relationship, what you have to do is you got to walk away from that situation, you know, go scream into a pillow all the shit that you want to say to her or go yell at your windshield as you drive around the block 15 fucking times, a couple of drinks, whatever you got to do, unwind. And this is how I do it because I have a brutal temper. And just write down on a piece of paper what you want to fucking convey, all right? And then practice it. I know this sounds crazy to to people who don't have this problem, but that's what I have to do because I, I'll sit there. And like that bank thing, I, would, I, 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 if I, I tried to practice it. My first attempt at practicing, I would start off slow and eventually get pissed <clears throat> all over again. I'd be like, hey, listen, I noticed that when you went in, you know, you opened your car door into my car and then you came out and then you did it again. And it's like, what the fuck? You know, OK, wait, no, no, I can't do that. All right. Start over, Bill. And each time I would get further and further to the end. So that's what you have to do with this person. You, you, you have to sit down hour and 12 minutes. How fucking long is this podcast? You have to sit down with her and just be like, look. I mean, I don't know what you're, you're just say, listen. We have four kids. That's the situation. You know, the place is going to be a mess. And I am working. Okay, obviously, I'm not giving you what you need. What What more do you need from me? Okay? Let her... That's a, probably a good way. All right, we need to talk. You seem really upset with me. Blah, 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 blah. What more do you need from me than what I'm doing? All right? Since she sees that you're relaxed, you're going to hear what the hell she wants to say. Then when she says what she has to say, you know... Fair enough. All right. Here's, here's what I need from you. All right. And then in a nice way, you got to tell her to stop spending all your money on stupid shit. All right. That's what you got to do. And I'm telling you, the key when you're fucking trying to make some headway in your relationship is with the woman is you can't lose your fucking cool. All right. And they will if, if you back them into a corner sometimes when they're doing something wrong because they're humans, they're going to do something wrong. When you back them into the corner and they did something wrong, watch out if they start attacking you. All right. With shit that has nothing to do with what you're arguing about. Like you're arguing about, you know, you know, whatever. Like you, you fucking um, she keeps leaving the TV on and going to bed and it's on all night. And she's fucking whatever, whatever the fuck that debt causes the, the electric bill to go up. If all of a sudden she starts going, well, you know, you're just mad because you're, you know, you're just short or she attacks you for that or some other bullshit or just you're just a fucking asshole right there. She just abandoned her argument. And what she's doing now is she's just trying to make you mad so that she can steer the argument into some other bullshit or just ho- hopefully get you to say something so fucked up that it uh, it just totally camouflages, you know, the bullshit that she did to start the fucking argument, basically. So. Just keep you cool. You got to sit down. You got to, dude. You got four girl. You got four kids with this with this girl. You, you, you're attached at the hip with this woman. Okay. So what you want to do is try to have a good time. You're a good guy. You're working your fucking ass off. Okay. She needs to appreciate that, and uh, she has to appreciate that. You know. Uh, you know. What do you want to do? You want to fucking whatever the fuck you're doing. You do want to walk around picking up uh, SpongeBob SquarePants stuffed animals all day. You know. You got to be like, sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. See, this is why I'm not good at it. Sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. The fuck do you think was going to happen? You know, get your tubes tied. Quit bitching at me. See, that's the first pass. That's the first way I would say it. (laughs) And by you get to the end, you just say, listen, you know, I love you. You love me. We have four beautiful kids. We have to work together. It's definitely a trying time being this young with all these kids, but blah, 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 blah. And I'm telling you, your, your, your life will be – like it'll be better. It'll be better if you work it out. But the worst thing you want to do is come and hurt after you've had a few pops and said, listen, let me tell you something, you dumb cunt. All right? I'm the backbone of this fucking country. You don't want to come at her that way. All right? You stupid bitch. I'm fucking working my balls off. Why don't you go out there on that goddamn fucking oil rig all day? You know? Why don't you go down to the pharmacy and get on the fucking pill? Maybe you wouldn't have to be picking up so much shit. All right? Or they'll let me know to pull out. You say dumb shit like that, you know, and then you're going to have a you're going to have a fucking horrific relationship. You don't want to do that. So that's it. That's the podcast for this week, everybody. And as I mentioned, I am up on Twitter now and actually enjoying it. I have made peace with the with the tweeting. You know what I feel like right now? I feel like a uh I feel like Johnny Damon when he went to the Yankees after trashing t- twittering, but and now I'm fucking, you know, shaved my beard, got a haircut. 
oh, you know, I'm just going to try to come in and contribute on t- Twitter wherever I can. Uh, no, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's just typical me. I am, uh, I'm an old soul. I'm a crabby 80-year-old as a 42-year-old. I am. I look, oh, something new. I don't like it. I didn't like Facebook. I still don't really like it, but I'm, I'm at the mercy of you guys. You guys all go to Twitter. What the fuck am I supposed to do? You know? I stayed on MySpace as long as I could. I felt like I was in a ghost town, like some old minor town that dried up, and I was just sitting there listening to the rusty hinges, you know, as the door swing, swung back and forth. Oh, Jesus, Bill, we get it. Stop being so fucking dramatic. You're a Twitter in fig. You're a tweeter. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the podcast for this week. You guys all have a, uh, you all have a wonderful week, and uh, go fuck yourselves. All right, see you. Dream Promotion of the single life of the damn fair bill.